I thought it might be useful for the uh, second years for next year to have these videos to go over terminology and um, recap that and think about the importance of um, different aspects of, of, of terminology and different word classes and different types of phrases and clauses and what they might do contextually. I thought this would also be good for people coming up to first year language to get their head around all of this. So today I want to look at nouns and pronouns which I guess in theory are the most straightforward um, word classes to think about and, and use the terminology for but can be very impactful as I'm hoping I'll be able to show you. So if you look at the picture um, there I've got uh, several different nouns that you could use to uh, describe uh, what's going on. So we've got confrontation, scuffle, brawl, fight, scrap, handbags, riot, attack. All of them are nouns that could absolutely be used to describe um, that uh, picture. However, the choice of noun that we make is going to impact how we um, feel about what's going on in that picture. Um, brawl implies there's loads and loads of people outside of the picture. Attack implies it's one-sided, whereas scrap or handbags implies that this is not really anything to, to worry about, that this is just a really uh, minor you know, event, that, that it's just people just having a bit of a falling out. The choice of noun can be very, very important. Um, so you may well have been taught in, uh, maybe even as far back as primary school, that, that nouns are people, places, things, um, or idea, that, that, that nouns are, are, are just things, um, which, which is, true um all those things are nouns okay but for a level you do need to be a little bit more specific just labeling things as nouns isn't quite as good as going a little bit deeper uh, as i've said there hilariously um you don't want the examiners to had doc you any marks because it's a fish educational and hilarious that's what i'm aiming for so there's really th three types of noun, okay? There's a proper noun. Those are the ones with capital letters. It's a person, it's a company, it's a country. If you put a capital letter, it's a proper noun. Um, abstract nouns are a little bit harder to explain. They are concepts, they are ideas. So they are, they are still things, they're not actions or descriptions, but they are not something that you could sort of see, taste, touch, smell, or hear. So for example, peace or happiness or emotion they're all things but they're not physical things that are there any word that ends t-i-o-n um i say any word almost any word there may be some exception that i'm not thinking of will be an abstract noun think about emotion motion nation all of those are concepts and then concrete nouns are your, are your common ones um you may also see them labeled as common nouns okay they're tangible they're physical things that you can actually see that you can experience by one of the five uh senses if you can put ah or the, or an in front of it, it's a noun. So what you may want to do is, is actually have a go at writing a sentence using those three types to sort of experience the, the difference there. Um, right, pronouns simply have the function of replacing nouns in sentences. They are there primarily to make language a bit easier. So we're not using the name of the person time after time after time, every time they're mentioned in a text. Imagine a novel where every time the main character is mentioned, we use their full name. That's going to get quite tedious quite quickly. So they replace names in sentences for ease. But they can also have a wider impact than that. And actually, pronouns can be labelled for all sorts of things, okay? You may well have come across personal pronouns. Are you, me, he, she? You may call them personal pronouns. We need to be a little bit more specific. You need to be thinking about those three areas there. Are they first, second, or third person? Are they subject or object? Are they singular or plural? To demonstrate that, um, this shows all the different kinds of, of ways that you may change uh, personal pronouns for different reasons. It is... Um, it, it is quite sort of confusing to see it all in, in, in one go, but so you may want to pause this and take time to, to look at these um, things. Okay, but at the top, first person pronouns are I or me. Um, if, you, if you're talking singularly, if you're talking plural, it's we or us. Now look at the, the different uses of these words. We've got he, she, we've got him, we've got her. We've got different types of pronoun for different purposes. Is the pronoun the subject? So is it I, he, we, you, they, they are the person doing the action? Or is the pronoun the object, the person having the, ob the um, action done to them? Do you want to kick the ball to me? Do you want to talk to you, him, her, us? Okay, is it singular, is it plural? Does it refer to one person? Or more than one person um is it first person second person or third person i think all of those can have impact now 
you could of course fall down a bit of rabbit hole here and every time you see a pronoun label it as a um, first person singular object pronoun or a second person plural subject pronoun you don't necessarily always need to do that what you need to do is be able to talk about the most important bit so don't just say it's a personal pronoun focus on what is the most important bit what is the bit that's having the meaning what's the bit that's having the impact so is it the fact that it's a subject or object is it he or him is it she or her um is it i or me that might give or take away power if i say um i i kicked the ball that's that's very different um to to be saying the ball was kicked at him yeah one is the person doing it one is the person having it done to them okay that's quite an obvious example but often they can give or take away power. Stories about marginalised groups, for example, um, refugees, asylum seekers, often they are the object in the sentence. They're having things done to them, okay? Whereas um, the charity workers, say, who are campaigning, are presented as the subjects. They're the one doing the thing. It can change how we feel. Is someone presented as passive or are they having, you know, are they doing the action themselves? Is it singular or plural? So is it I, singular, or we, plural? Is it you, singular? or they plural what that might do is, is show personal feeling it might um create a bond if you go for singular you are showing how you personally feel you're giving yourself like the power or taking accountability or showing what you personally believe in if it's plural you're creating a bond you're creating the sense of like the family or togetherness or joint ownership there adverts will do that um all the time do they use you to target an individual or do they use we to create a sense of a team and then finally first second or third person okay so first person i or me second person you third person they them he she it first person can often show identity or personal feeling you might want to target someone for good or bad that would be second person how dare you targeting them for bad or you deserve it targeting them for good you may also group people as other again going back to those stories about um refugees asylum seekers often they're they're created as other it's they or it's them it's not often written from their own point of view so it's very easy to group them as a, as a different kind of uh, you know species almost of, of, of people um there are other types of, of pronoun and, and, and they are there okay so um possessive pronouns show who owns something so that's mine that's hers that's theirs yeah it shows ownership Interrogative are using questions, who did this? So the who is still a pronoun, it's replacing the name of the person, but it's using a question. What did you do? Okay, where is it? So again, where is used in place of the, the, the noun that would describe where it was. Demonstrative literally demonstrate. If you imagine that you're pointing, yeah, what are those? What's that? Okay, there you're demonstrative. You use the word rather than name the thing. Indefinite are designed to refer to more than one thing. So any, either, both, anyone, anybody. Adverts will often do that. Anyone can use it. Okay. Or um, anybody can do this. Yeah. It, it creates the idea that you don't need to be, you know, an expert or, or, or special to, to understand it. Anyone can do it. It, it. It's for everyone. Yeah. It creates a sense of uh, democracy or, or ease of use. Relative are a little bit um, trickier, but very good if you want to sort of start moving into, into grammatical analysis as well. What relative pronouns do? They add extra information about a noun in a subordinate clause. So I've given you two examples there. The sandwich, which, that's your relative pronoun, was mine, got stolen. Okay, so the which was mine is your extra clause, your extra information. The which lets us know that we are getting a bit more information about the sandwich. Same with the man who glared angrily came towards me. The who is a relative pronoun. We're told that the man's coming towards you. The who glared angrily adds extra information. The who tells us that we're going to get extra information here about the man. So they're the names and pronouns. What I've done is I've um, picked out three stories here, all about the 2019 general election. So a, an event that, that was reported by a lot of newspapers. And I've just highlighted some of the important nouns or pronouns I think are making a difference. So this first one is from The Guardian. Okay, The Guardian, broadly speaking, um, supports um sort of sent the center left area so so labor or, or, or lib dems traditionally okay i've picked out some of the nouns in this that i think are really important so notice the guardian view the proper noun guardian okay um the the abstract noun view gives this idea that they are a powerful company and this is a, an important considered look they viewed it it's not just their opinion it's 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 a considered overall idea i like political landscape okay that's a really interesting one i mean that is a concrete noun a landscape is a thing that you can see 
but it's used metaphorically. You know, the literal landscape of the country hasn't changed, but it suggests that there's a momentous political change that's gone on. Notice Boris Johnson has re redrawn the map again. Map is a, a, a common noun, a concrete noun. It's a thing, but it's used metaphorically here. OK, he's, you know, if we look at a literal map, it has changed because a lot more areas voted conservative than had before. But actually, it suggests that the, the world has, has changed. We get more... Um, uh, informal ones, things like Lib Dems, it shortens those words, suggests the readers know exactly who they are. Notice they are in disarray. Now, that would sometimes get mislabeled as an adjective because it describes them, but it's not. If you imagine um, disarray, it can't be used as an adjective. You can't say the disarray Lib Dems. Yeah, they are in disarray. They're in a state of disarray. So again, it's a, an abstract noun. Um, it talks about Brexit, it shows political knowledge. Brexit will move to the centre of the stage. Again, centre. Um, Abstract noun, I say st stage, um, concrete noun, but again, used metaphorically. So it uses these metaphors, these political metaphors, to show the momentousness of what's happened. I've not highlighted all of them, but other important ones, I think victor, and then we get triumph, this sense of it being a fight. Yeah, again, it, it makes it sound um, metaphorically like a, like a battle or a fight. So again, um, it is a triumph. It's an abstract noun there. Yeah, you could put ah before the word triumph, so it's a it's it's a noun, but it's not something you can you can sort of see. It's a, it's a more of a concept. Notice the Tories, that informal um, political language suggests the readers are familiar with this. Um, and notice at the bottom, Mr. Johnson. Now, often this shows respect, but I think in this case it's a bit different. Um, the Prime Minister was often referred to as Boris, you know, quite to, to set up this idea that he was almost like a friend of the voter. The Guardian don't do that. They call him Mr. Johnson. So I think that formality actually, rather than being about respect, is about um, distancing themselves um, from him. Notice that relative pronoun afterwards, Mr. Johnson, who sensed the opportunity. It's a bit of extra information about him. That's your relative pronoun there. Um, this one's from, from the Daily Mirror, a different newspaper, but getting broadly supportive of, of, of Labour and, and the Lib Dems. It, it gives their take on it is, is Jeremy Corbyn basically has, has, has um, you know, apologised to, to the voters. I've, in here, I've picked out some of the pronouns. I've highlighted them. Notice this is what he says. It's not the paper themselves. It's, it's his words. But notice, we will learn. We will earn their trust back. So we, Labour was seen as a very divided party at this time. By saying we, he's giving the sense that actually now they're far more united. We will earn their trust back. He separates the party and the people, saying, you know, we will do what's right for you. Notice later on, your support has been such a source of strength. That second person pronoun, he singles um, the, the, the readers out. Yeah, I value you. I know what you're saying. So I, I, I don't think um, I'd necessarily look here um, at whether it's subject to objects. I think the important thing is the second person. I think earlier on, it's the plural. That's, I think, what important rather than the, the subject. And then notice the next paragraph, I take my responsibility. He moves to first person, showing personal regret, personal um, guilt almost over, over what has happened. So he, he suggests Labour are, are a joined up party, but he himself does take his own responsibility for what happened. It's effective uses of pronouns. Now, I've not labelled everyone by subject, object, um, singular, plural, first, second, third. I've just picked out the important bits. The third one, this is from The Sun, so broadly a right-wing newspaper that would support the, the Conservative election victory. And this is the take of someone who basically watched um, the Channel 4 election coverage. You know, Channel 4 tend to be a bit more supportive of, 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 of Labour. And he's basically gloating about what happened. But notice those Channel 4 lefties. So he labels them as those, that third person um, determiner there. A determiner is like a pronoun, but it's just he, he uses the word lefties afterwards. He labels what they are. He calls them lefties. So a very informal um concrete concrete noun there lefties it, it disparages them it suggests that they're kind of idiots they're in this cult almost and then he says were you still up so he targets that reader directly were you with me were you laughing with me for the nish kumar moment nish kumar a left-wing political commentator he labels this as, as a moment that was really momentous when basically he stopped laughing and he says please tell me you were he establishes that personal connection with the audience Notice he talks about Nish Kumar's socialist fantasy, so that abstract noun, suggesting that, that their, their dreams are not realistic, that they're a bit of a joke to him. And then he says the highlight of my general election night, his own personal view. He talks about the Corbynistas at the bottom. So again, slightly insultingly lab labels those, those, those Labour voters, Corbynistas, like they're almost part of a cult. Um, and, and also as though they voted for just, you know, Jeremy Corbyn rather than the party. They were, they were these 
cult members infatuated with, with one person and then at the end would have been if Labour had got a result. Notice that far more informal um, choice of noun there, a result, whereas the Guardian talks about triumph and victory. This is result, a bit more informal, reflecting the sun's slightly more informal nature.